Good afternoon. afternoon. Y'all are getting really good at that. On behalf of Alumni Council and the Alumni Association, welcome to Swarthmore. In fact, assuming you make it through your first day of classes on Monday, welcome to the Alumni Association. Technically, all former students are automatically members. The alumni of the college are an incredible resource for students, and I hope you will take advantage of us during the next four years. <laughs> during my time at Swarthmore, I enjoyed many benefits from getting to know alumni, including a summer of free housing during an internship in DC. Now, as an alum myself, I always enjoy interacting with students and sometimes even get to hire squatties to come work with me after graduation. But enough about alumni. Today, we're here to talk about you. Some of the experiences you may face over the next four years and how you will respond to them. While I could tell you about some of the late night conversations or political debates on campus that challenged my core beliefs, I'm instead going to focus on one particular core belief in hopes that y'all can learn from some of my missteps in the past. That belief is we are all in this together, and so it's okay to ask for some help along the way. Having recently begun my term as president of the Alumni Association, I spent the past few months thinking back over my time at Swarthmore. In fact, I remember sitting exactly where you are today, 15 years ago during my new student orientation. I knew no one aside from my new roommate and one other person from my high school, and I felt incredibly out of place. To make matters worse, I was recovering from major jaw surgery with a still swollen face, I'm talking like a triple chin, and braces, and I was on a liquid-only diet. Not only did I feel nervous and out of place, but I didn't feel like myself. Today, August 28th, is my birthday. That year, <laughs> That year, my birthday fell in the middle of new student orientation, and my parents had secretly ordered a full sheet cake that said, Happy Birthday, Emily Ann, and coordinated with my RA for it to be a surprise at a hall dinner. A full sheet cake is intended to serve 120 people. <laughs> it was massive. I called my mom confused and reminded her that I couldn't eat cake. She said that wasn't the point. The point was to meet people. She suggested I put up signs throughout the dorm announcing free cake in my dorm room. She promised I would meet lots of new people and make friends with upperclassmen as well as the first years. She was of course correct and over the next few days the cake disappeared and my list of friends of all years multiplied. During the first few weeks of college, I pretty much dove headfirst into anything and everything that interested me. The activities fair, I signed up for everything from new sports teams to political clubs and community service activities, and only a few months later whittled down my email subscriptions to the clubs that I actually wanted to stay involved in. Campus jobs, I was on the babysitting list and a phone-a-thon caller for, annu for annual giving from the get-go. Academics, I'd never taken a film course, so obviously I had to sign up for Patty White's Intro to Film and Media Studies. First year seminars, I couldn't wait to get started on the reading list for Marge Murphy's course on gender in America, which to this day is one of the best classes I've ever taken. Pretty much the only thing I avoided was the swim test. It ends up that the one perk of having major surgery right before you start college is that you are allowed to defer the swim test for one semester. I find, found myself well prepared for the rigorous coursework at Swarthmore and didn't face any significant academic struggles that fall. I had heard about SAMs, writing associates, and other resources available to help you if you were struggling, but I knew those were not for me. I was doing just fine. At the same time, I was heavily involved in campus life, and I didn't beat myself up if I didn't always get an A. In fact, looking back on my transcript, there were a lot of times I didn't get an A. I was a solid B, maybe B plus student, and that was just fine. I spent my first, my second, my third and my fourth semester exploring any and every course that caught my fancy. 
Along the way, I distilled three key areas that I found of particular interest and thus kept taking more and more courses in. Film and media studies, women's studies, now gender and sexuality studies, and biology. I originally took bio two just to complete my science requirement. I liked it so much that sophomore year I took bio one and then in the spring I took a two credit biology seminar in ecology. All signs pointed to a biology major. This was great, except for one thing, chemistry. I'd always had a bad relationship with chemistry. Started way back sophomore year in high school and now I was facing a requirement where at the time you had to take Gen Chem, Chem 10, and organic chemistry to be a biology major. I was also planning on studying abroad the spring of my junior year in Prague. Thus, I made the decision to take Chem 10 in the fall of my junior year and organic, which was only offered once each year, the spring of my senior year. The chemistry faculty here are fabulous, and I was convinced I could pull this off without a hitch and still have a wonderful junior and senior year. After all, aside from that time I slept through a statistics midterm, I never really struggled too much. Junior year, general chemistry started and was going really pretty well. You know, it was fine until I got tired. Instead of my afternoon of rugby practice or my late night of homework, I was lying in bed exhausted. Then came the sore throat. I'd never felt anything like this, but I stubbornly knew that the only option was to just keep chugging along. My best friend, who is now a pediatrician, had been through this before, saw the symptoms, and marched me over to Worth Health Center and to get me checked out. Mono, AKA the kissing disease. To this day, I don't know how I got it, but I can tell you with full certainty, I wasn't kissing anyone that fall. <laughs> Mono knocked me out. I spent days in the health center, often unable to go to class. If I hadn't been open to asking for help, I wouldn't have survived that semester. To this day, I'm thankful for the nurses at Worth for patiently taking care of me, my friends who reviewed lecture notes with me, and the professors who were generous with assignment extensions. After catching up on problem sets, papers, and exams, I survived the semester and headed off to Prague with a so-so grade in general chemistry. After an amazing semester abroad, and side note, if you have the chance to go abroad, take it. I came back to campus for my senior year. While some friends were taking easy classes to enjoy their last semesters on campus, and others were cramming for honors exams, I was simply terrified of organic chemistry. I was one of three seniors in the course that spring, and we all needed to pass the class to graduate. Most of the other students were first years. They all wanted to go to medical school, and I just wanted to graduate. I felt a little out of my league. I went to every lecture, I did every problem set, I even did all the reading, and yet I was completely, utterly lost. I eventually gave up on the textbook because it was so over my head, and I switched to a copy of, I'm not kidding on this, Organic Chemistry for Dummies. <laughs> I went to office hours and worked with a professor after class, my best friend was a chemistry major and she tried helping. One thing I held out on was a tutor. I knew the dean's office had them, but I felt like if I asked for a tutor, it was a sign that I just wasn't smart enough. I'd survived three and a half years without one. I certainly didn't need one now. Fortunately, common sense, along with a fear of not graduating, prevailed, and a wonderful sophomore who also happened to be a rugby teammate worked tirelessly with me as my tutor to get me through the semester. She was happy for a campus job that she thought was pretty easy, and I was just thankful to be making some progress. After the first few minutes of our initial session, any silly fears of looking stupid for asking for help went away. It be became obvious that the only big mistake I'd made was waiting so long to ask for help. The night before the final, my mom called with words of encouragement. From her advice with that giant cake way back first year to four years later, she'd always been full of helpful guidance and support. Her wisdom that night has always stuck with me. She said, just remember, D is for diploma. <laughs> I didn't get that D, I got a C minus. I have never been so proud. <laughs> Yeah.
getting there wasn't something I did on my own. Getting there took the help of the work staff, my professor, my tutor, my friends, my family, and many, many others along the way. I may not use my organic chemistry skills or what's left of them in my day-to-day -day life 11 years post Swarthmore, but I have never forgotten the lessons that course taught me. Today in my job working with nonprofit hospitals to help them navigate difficult business and financial decisions, I am often the one standing up and presenting to the CEO, CFO, and hospital board, but I'm never in it all on my own. I always have a team that helps me get there. They helped me through the analysis, they helped me build the slides, and they listened to me practice and supported me along the way. Even when I was thinking about what to say to y'all today, I called up my friend who years ago had intervened and given me her copy of Organic Chemistry for Dummies. She's now a successful periodontist and my go-to for second opinions on anything related to jaw surgery. She didn't remember giving me that book, but she certainly remembered the number of times that she had to ask for help when she was on campus. By the way, her advice for you is, drink plenty of water, always wear sunscreen, find your friends after parties, and do not date anyone on your hall. <laughs> so, as you start your adventure at Swarthmore, dive in, explore it all, join those clubs, try a new sport, and take on a new challenge. Enroll in those classes you had never even heard of until you saw the course catalog. This is your chance to do exactly that. And don't be afraid. You have an entire community here to support you and help you through it. All you have to do is ask. Thank you.